Kim or Melissa, whenever you guys think we've got a good uh, chunk of our attendees list, just let me know and we'll get started. I say let's just go ahead and get started, Jen. I'm recording and we can send it out. Okay, okay. sounds good. Then we'll just go ahead and jump in. Um, so my name is Jennifer. I'm one of the enrollment coordinators here. And part of the reason that I'm the one doing this presentation is because I used to teach high school English for many, many years. Um, I also owned my own tutoring company for a while, taught high school and college, um, and I have a master's in English as well. So that's just kind of a little bit about me and kind of why I'm doing this and not your actual teacher. Um, but the whole purpose of this is because we know that this class and this essay is difficult and we just want to make sure that we're giving you guys as much, um, you know, knowledge and information as we can to help you pass this class. Okay, so can everybody see my PowerPoint You're okay? I think it just disappeared. Uh oh. Me. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Yay, technology. Okay. So, um, so here, this first screen should look rather familiar. These are the different prompts that they gave you. Um, the reason that I'm showing the prompts first is when you're creating your essay or your thesis, it's really important to pick a topic that you know a lot about. This is not the time where you want to try to challenge yourself and be like, oh, I don't know anything about influential people, so I want to learn about them. You want to pick something that you already know a lot about. So if you do need to do any kind of research, it's you've got a good starting point at the very least. Okay. Um, also make sure, just kind of in general, whenever you're writing anything in English and they give you a prompt, you always want to reword that prompt and try to put that either in the thesis or your topic sentence or both. Okay. And we'll kind of talk about both of those terms, what that means and what that looks like. So first and foremost, the thesis. The thesis is one of the main points of your paper that if you don't have a thesis, in your introduction and you don't reword your thesis in the conclusion, you'll automatically fail the paper. So if you want to take a minute and write this down, this is literally a tried and true formula for creating a thesis that your teacher and the committee both will recognize as a thesis and it's very easy to write and to restate. So, um, and just to kind of back up here for a minute, um, the thesis is a statement that usually is you saying something that you intend to prove or disprove. So it's basically your main sentence that kind of lines up everything else in your paper. So the thesis is really important. The first blank is who or what then you have either is or was depending on the tense. So is obviously for present, was for past. You're gonna put in a verb and then because and then the reason. Now after the because, sometimes is where you'll list the two or three different things that you intend to talk about later in the essay and kind of make your thesis also into kind of the scope where you're explaining where the paper is headed, but it doesn't have to. So one example is Andrew is a great teacher because he goes out of his way to help his students. So here, Andrew is the first blank. That's our who or what. He is a great teacher, which goes, whoops, in our second blank, because, and then here's our reasoning. What does he do? And then that would be linked into a next sentence that would explain what are those ways? How does he go out of his way to help his students? What does he do? And that that would then be what you write about further. So again, it's important to consider the prompt and what they're asking for. So usually the thesis is a direct answer to the prompt. So you're kind of rewording that prompt but then you go more in depth in the rest of your essay. So again, it's just kind of setting the scene. So it's usually either the first sentence of the first paragraph or the last sentence of the first paragraph, depending on 
you know, what other stuff you have in your introduction. And if you're including other things like attention getters and whatnot, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Um, so here is another example. So um, one of the questions that they were asked, I believe last year was something along the lines of what was the most rewarding time in your life so far, or talk about a, an experience in your life. So if that is our prompt, if what is the most rewarding time in your life so far is the prompt, then our thesis would be the most rewarding time in my life, that's our who or what, was when I got to help students finish their high school diplomas and start college because it meant a lot to me to be able to change lives. So again, this is the main argument and I could say change lives by and then list three different things there, or I can leave it alone, and then my next sentence is gonna go in depth on what those things are, the two or three things. Typically, when you're doing an essay like this, it's gonna be five paragraphs. An introduction, three body, and a conclusion. So typically, you'll have three reasons in a list with commas in between, but it depends on what you're doing. If it's a compare and contrast or a different type of essay, that might be different, but in this case, I would recommend using the, the five um, paragraph structure. So have three reasons for whatever that is. So here's some examples where I literally gave you the framework depending on what prompt you chose. So the first prompt I believe was talking about the city or the country, which one you'd rather live in. I would rather live in a city because and then you give your reasons. You can list them. You can give one main reason that kind of links everything together. Obviously, it could be the country. It could go either way. I just kind of picked one just for example purposes. Um, the second one, the influential person. I think the most influential person in the 20th century would be blank because blank. Pretty self-explanatory. Three things NEO can do to help students succeed in college is blank, blank, and blank, because blank. Three things I want to accomplish after college are blank, blank, and blank, because blank. Or three positive or negative things about living forever is blank, 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 because blank. So again, it really sets it up very nicely. It makes sure you have all of the pieces and parts in the thesis, and then when you go back in your conclusion and you reword your thesis, it's really easy to take this type of format. And like, for example, the first one, as you can see, comma, I would rather live in the city because, and just simply adding in those couple of words, as you can see, shows that you talked about it earlier up in your essay and that you already, you're kind of telling them, I already told you this. And so that counts as reworking the thesis, and it's super easy. So, and I will stop and have time for questions, okay? Don't worry about that. But if there's anything major you want me to stop and go back over, or you want me to review, or any major questions, feel free to just pop it in the chat for right now, or raise your hand, and we can always pause, okay? So, the essays we kind of briefly talked about should have three main sections, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. And then as kind of a side note, if you are doing something, for example, the influencer paper or influencer prompt rather, if you're using that, unless you're an expert on whoever your person is, you probably have references which means any type of information that isn't from your brain that you didn't already know specifically, you have to cite. And so instead of going through and taking up time on exactly how to do those citations right now, um, at the end of this presentation, I have a couple of references that you guys can write down if you need help. There's some websites that will literally do that work for you and format it for you. They'll even show you how to do in-text citations if needed as well. So make sure you kind of check on that. Um, and if anyone has any questions on how to do that, we can always talk about that too at the end, okay? So again, looking at the three sections, this kind of gives you a example outline on how to set it up. Um, I really like this format 
And whenever I used to teach high school, I always taught my students to outline their paper like this because it's very simple. It's very easy on the eyes. Basically, you can write out your intro if you want, your, like your thesis. And then inside, so you draw three boxes. And then inside each one, you put what your topic is. So, whoops. If I was talking about um, our previous thing where we were talking about um, the most rewarding time in my life, if I had my three different things that they did, then that's where they would go. So maybe this would be um, helping students get a diploma, this would be getting students into college, and then this would be students graduating college. So I would just write instead of body one, you know, high school diploma, college degree, job, or whatever those three things are. Okay, and then off to the side here, you can put three bubbles or two bubbles. And then if you want, you can give yourself what that topic sentence is and then just literally list what your example is. So if we were to pick a topic like an influencer and let's say that you said, um, oh, I'm terrible with celebrity stuff. Um, let's say that you said Biden was an influencer. You could say, you know, vaccine or for paragraph one and then maybe racism for paragraph two and then maybe something else that he's done in paragraph three and then you would put over on the side like for vaccine you could put a statistic on how many people were vaccinated or how far along it's going or how many people's lives have been saved or but you just put a simple note on the side here to remind you what it is, or it also helps if you're doing a larger paper to put whatever your source is, so you know this is where my information is coming from for this paragraph, and you can easily go back and find it. Okay, and then again, same thing for paragraph two and paragraph three. So ultimately, this is what it looks like. Okay, and the reason that we've got these triangle shapes here is to kind of show you typically your introduction is going to come to a point which is the thesis typically the thesis is the last thing that you say outside of listing what those three main body paragraphs are going to be so you start general and you get more specific and then the body is really you know, three paragraphs is where you give all the details. Um, it's really important that each paragraph is specifically about one topic. You don't want to be like down here. Oh, and by the way, you know, I'm talking about something from up here. Okay, keep it very well organized. If you can, in between here, this is a higher level skill, but for those of you that are up for the challenge, in between these two paragraphs, you can even put in transition phrases and say something like, not only did Biden do a great job with vaccines, but he also has taken a strong stance on racism. Then we're going between vaccines and racism. Or if we're talking about living in the country versus the city, uh, you know, not only is living in the city more convenient, but there's a lot more to do. And then here I'm talking about, you know, um, here's what to do and then here's how it's more convenient and I can get to things easier. Okay, so it kind of makes it flow a little bit better. And then the conclusion, you're going to start by restating your thesis. And you can just use a couple of more kind of finalizing um, words, like as you can see, or as I just mentioned, or, um, you know, as discussed, or as you can plainly see, or some kind of a concluding sentence will kind of help you make it sound like you're rewording it without completely recreating the wheel. Okay. And if you want to, Adrian, if you want to have a quick question, you can go ahead and ask me now. Um, I was just curious to the fact of possibly whenever this is said and done, if we could possibly get a copy of maybe the presentation. Yes, right. absolutely. That way you can kind of go back and, yes. and rewatch it. Absolutely. Yes, Not you. a problem. You got yep. it. So we're recording and I'm going to send that out to you right after we wrap up. Perfect. 
All right, so um, the introduction, the main body and the conclusion, you tell them what you're gonna tell them, you tell them and you tell them what you told them. And this is even something that I went to a military ball and the first female general ever in the army spoke. And that's the first thing she said. She said, any good speaker always knows you always start out with saying what you're gonna say and then you say it and then you say what you have said. So I just kind of wanted to show this visual just to kind of make that whole five paragraph essay even seem a little bit more simple because really you're kind of setting it up, then you're telling them and then you're repeating it again. And I know it seems really redundant, but that's just kind of how it is. And when you get into more complex papers down the road, it'll make a lot more sense as to why you have to keep repeating yourself. So. The introduction, if we kind of break it down a little bit more, again, this is where you tell them what you're going to tell them. So if you are able to, an attention grabber is a really good way to start the paper. So you're not just going to be like, bang, here's my thesis, here's my three reasons, and have a one-sentence introduction. Sometimes the introduction is hard because we want to write at least three sentences per paragraph, and sometimes it's hard to do that with the introduction. So if you're stuck, see if you can find a good quote or some kind of a statistic or fact online. That's a good way to start. Even if you use my favorite statistic, which is half of all statistics are fake, which I just made up. Um, or if you have a story to tell. So if you're using like the city and the country one or even the influencers and this person really had a long, strong influence on you or, um, you know, I'll show you guys a student paper where the student's talking about the birth of her son. She started out with a nice little story. So that's always a good go to if you're doing more of a personal essay because then you can kind of set the scene and even include some good strong verbs um, or some good like sense words. If you can ever include stuff in a personal story where you're like, I saw this or, you know, to my left or above me or, you know, including any of your senses, it's always great. Um, you know, even if you're talking about like the city versus the country one, you know, the city you can, you know, um, as the smell of garbage met my nose, I knew this wasn't where I wanted to live. You know, things like that to kind of really show instead of telling what the scene is to set that scene, okay? And then after all of that fun stuff, you bring in your thesis and then you're gonna list out the examples that you plan to discuss in your paper, which is often called the scope. Um, where you're literally just gonna say, these are these three things that I intend to talk about so here's an example, okay? Wow, I exclaimed as I sat back and admired the beautiful child that was just placed into my arms. I can't believe I just did that. That's my attention getter. And it's especially strong because I'm starting out with onomatopoeia, which is a big fancy word for these words like wow, bang, crash. That really gets the reader's attention. But in general, we're starting with quotes. We're starting with a story. It's short and sweet. And it makes you want to read more. Like, why is this mother like, I can't believe I did that? People give birth every day, right? So we're trying to get their attention. And then here's the thesis, smack in the middle, right towards the end. Childbirth to me was the most rewarding experience of my life because it's something I never thought I would survive. And then this is what I was talking about here where I'm saying if you need to do a whoops, separate sentence to explain what those three reasons are you're going to use in the rest of your body, you can. Or I could say because I had to or because I learned how to get over my fear of needles, find the right doctor group, and find techniques to help me enjoy the most amazing moment of my life. So you can do that either way, but I wanted to show you an example of how to do it separately, which sometimes helps if you're trying to meet the three to four sentence minimum for the introduction, because sometimes the introduction's the hardest part, right? We don't really know what to say. You're just kind of staring at a blank piece of paper or your computer screen's blinking at you. So this is a good way to, you know, kind of break it down. So the by paragraphs 
each paragraph is going to be one of your reasons. So it's reasons inside of reasons inside of reasons, right? We're getting more in depth each time. So of your three things that you explain in your scope, each one of those will have its own paragraph. And then in your body paragraph, you want to have two or three examples or pieces of evidence to back up what you're saying. And the first sentence of your body paragraph is like a mini thesis. It's called a topic sentence. And a topic sentence is not a thesis because it's not as big of a statement. It's not as final of a statement. And it's typically not worded the same way as a thesis. Um, but you can, a thesis can be a topic sentence, but a topic sentence can't be a thesis, if that makes sense. So you have to follow the correct formatting on a thesis, but if you wanted to have a mini thesis for each of your body paragraphs, nobody's going to be like, oh, you can't do that. That's bad. Does that make sense? So you want to put in actual evidence if you can, whether it's an anecdote that goes along with why you don't want to live in the city versus the country why somebody's an influencer, um, or what NEO can do, or what you want to do after college, and give some kind of reason why. Sometimes that can be harder. Uh, like, for example, if you're talking about what NEO can do, if you're saying, you know, they can, for example, help students with career support, maybe. Why? Give examples of that. How can they specifically do that? Okay, make something up. And then your conclusion, again, you're going to restate your introduction, but word it slightly differently. It's really, really important that you include your thesis in both your introduction or conclusion. Because automatically, guys, if you don't do a thesis and you don't restate your thesis, it's an automatic fail. Okay? So here is an example of rewording the exact thesis that I just did in my little fake introductions, you can see. So here, it's basically the same thing. And then as you can see, through the help of my family and friends, I learned how to, and then it goes through the same piece. So just by adding in that little bit of orange, it's basically just a couple extra words and that counts as rewording it. Okay, and really for your guys' purposes, I would recommend actually re-putting, as you can see, in front of where I put childbirth, because then it's even more cut and dry and clear, and your teacher knows that you are specifically restating your thesis, not just the introduction as a whole. Okay? So this is what I was kind of talking about with citing it in MLA format. Um, so Easy Bib or Citation Machine are great resources. You can literally type in the information and it will do the work for you. Um, Grammarly is a great website for having all sorts of grammar and spelling support in general. And then the Purdue OWL is just absolutely fabulous for anything you need writing-wise. If you want to learn how to do MLA and APA, they break it down. If you want to learn anything in grammar and writing, they have a resource for that. Um, it's done by Purdue University, but it's very, I used to use it as a high school teacher. Um, and when I taught college, you don't have to be part of Purdue to access it. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers if I'm dating myself here, those old like right source 2000 books or those old like right source sort of books that they used to give out when you were like at elementary school, it's like a little reference book sort of thing. This is basically like an online version of that for grownups. So um, that's a great resource to have overall. Okay. So Anybody have any questions or want to share a thesis and see if it is actually a thesis or have any pieces of their paper they want to share or workshop together or anything like that? Anybody have anything? Adrian? 
So for the paragraphs to follow the initial paragraph, so it's technically just the first paragraph repeated just in a different form? So in terms of, let's go back here. So you're saying these paragraphs? Yes. So essentially each paragraph is going to have its own topic, its own separate thing you're going to talk about. So each one of these is separate and it's on like, which, um, which prompt did you pick Adrian? Um, the preferred deliberate of a city or the country. Okay. So what are your reasons? Did you pick city or country better? Country. Okay. So what were your three reasons for wanting to live in the country? Quiet. Okay. So that would um, be body one. My children, you know, is safer, less traffic. Okay. Quiet, safe, and what else? I mean, um, just the scenery. Okay, and beautiful. So under quiet, you'd have to put some examples of that quietness and how it's important. Like um, maybe talking about sleep or talking about, um, you know, some people have animals and the loud noises can spook animals or, you know, something like that. But this is only going to be about how it's quiet, how it's peaceful, why that's important. You know, because I can argue that it, it can, I can get quiet in the city too, or I can go lock myself in my closet and have quiet. Why, mm -hmm. why is the country quiet better? You know what I um, mean? Yeah. And then, you know, safety, there's, that's a great place to put some kind of a quote or a statistic about crime rates. You know, the nearest city to me is Chicago and they have a murder every minute or whatever the case may be, you know, that kind of a thing. Okay. Does that make sense? And then yes, beautiful. Thank you. Give beautiful is got to be careful with because um, you've really got to give some examples, like really set the scene, give us some good sensory stuff, you know, um, like, you know, I could, I have a forest down the street and whenever I'm stressed, I go walk through the falling leaves and the babbling brook and I, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I lived in the Ozarks for a while, so. Perfect. Lots of good stuff to write about there and even talk about like maybe some of the stuff that you can see that's beautiful in the Ozarks, you know, okay. like the touristy sort of stuff. Like, why is it so beautiful? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Looks like Kimberly has a hand up as well. Yes, I am wondering how do you start how do you start uh, writing your conclusion? Like what words would you say? You don't want to say in conclusion of or right. whatever. So how would you word that? So actually a really great thing to do is to to literally type into Google's Google synonym try that again. Synonyms of and then put in quotes in conclusion. Because there's a lot of words and sentences that mean the same thing. So as a result, as you can see, um, in summary, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Just literally look up synonyms of in conclusion and you'll find tons of stuff that you can use. And then okay. sometimes that will help kind of give you more ideas too. Because with just a couple of words, you can make a big difference and make sure you've got the right parts in there for your paper. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else have any questions or want to check that their thesis is actually a thesis or anything? Otherwise, I do have a student paper that I can share with you guys really quickly if you'd like to kind of see what it looks like. Can you guys all see this? Can you guys see a paper up on my screen now or no? Yes, I can see it, but it's kind of blurry. Okay. Um, let me see if I can... I wonder if I can maybe zoom in. Um, the percent over there in the left corner under insert. I'm blind. Do I have to go back? Yep, let me just, hold on a second. Let me open this up again and make it a little bit bigger for you guys. Just so you can kind of see how it all comes together. 
Um, and honestly, they're really not looking for like anything fancy. The main thing, honestly, is the thesis and making sure that you have the correct structure. Um, it's also really important to always go back and proofread and make sure there aren't little silly mistakes in there too. Because that's really easy to lose major points on. Okay, and I think this should be... Okay, is that better now? It's better. Okay, good. So you can kind of at least see. Now, this student did not use the actual format that we talked about with the thesis. They did it in kind of a two-part thing. So the thesis is here. Um, and they kind of put... This is just kind of like a little bit of an attention getter, not really. Um, it just kind of starts out with, this is the main thing that happened. This is what I'm gonna talk about. This is kind of why this was, you know, a big ordeal for me. And then each paragraph kind of goes through and talks about being emotional, hormonal changes and how she felt like somebody different and how these emotions were really deep and really affected her. So here, the first paragraph, again, we're talking about how she was really, you know, emotional, um, really insecure, had a lot of um, issues with accepting of it, um, you know, feeling lucky to be chosen as his mommy, never feeling as important ever. It's a really beautiful way to kind of describe her emotions using words like eagerness. Um, this is a typo, ignore that. You know, talking about her subconscious mind. It's just really well done. I'll give you guys kind of a second to read through it a little bit. And then here, next, paragraph we're talking about how she wasn't ready um how she was going through all these hormonal changes and it was this big drastic picture that all of a sudden she had a son and all these decisions that she had to make and how it really changed her and changed her life and made it different and then our last paragraph here we're talking about the deep emotions and how she feels like it was still yesterday and how, you know, her heart started working differently and it's still, she can still feel these effects today from back then. And then here, she doesn't really completely reword the thesis, but she does by explaining here what she talked about even though she really did a lot of rewording a little bit more so than you really need to do and then she added in a really nice concluding sentence that just kind of wrapped everything up in a nice little bow and kind of like didn't leave us hanging let us know that you know it's been these great impacts super thankful and happy and it kind of goes along with the whole kind of theme of the paper, which is, you know, childbirth and how her emotions typically weren't an issue, but that this made her more emotional and how that kind of affected her overall. So do you see how those kind of connect in to what you're talking about? And I kind of did it very cut and dry and very like, fill in the blank for you guys to make it very sick. But this is what it kind of looks like when it all actually comes together. Okay. 
So does anybody have any other questions or anything else? Looks like Casey has a question. Yes, so Hi. as far as formatting goes, when mm -hmm. we did the introduction, I noticed hers did not have an indention like the body did. It should be indented. It yes. should be. Okay. Yes. Also, I noticed that during the um during the the presentation, uh -huh. the conclusion looked a lot like the introduction. Should yes. that in fact pretty much look alike? Just reword your thesis. Yes, it should be very similar. Um, here, she kind of went a little bit more. She kind of changed things more than you need to. Um, at this point, though, and just for the specific reason that um, you guys get so, you lose so many points if you don't have the specific pieces of the essay, I would recommend really making it cut and dry. This is my thesis. Here's my scope. You know, don't worry too much about making it sound really cool and fancy as long as you make it very clear that this is my thesis and here it is restated. You know what I mean? Just so you don't lose silly points for something that it's cut and dry, that it, it is there. You know what I mean? Um, let me... Dee, do you have a question too? Didi, I think you're on mute, hon. Do we have another question? I think we lost Didi. Uh, Kimberly, do you have another question? The only thing that I am um, kind of curious about is, uh, so when I, so I'm having to redo the English class again because of my thesis the first time I took English because okay. I because I wasn't I guess the teacher that I had didn't clarify exactly what she was looking for so gotcha. I wasn't un I wasn't understanding what to do now the teacher that I have now pretty much broke everything down and it's easier but anyways Good. um so the thesis and and the re and the reestatement thesis is pretty much the last paragraph, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of people didn't pass the first time around because of that thesis. That's yeah. kind of why we're doing this because you know it wasn't really fully broken down, and so we wanted to really put it in as simple of terms as possible. Um, now, you don't have to do your thesis like this. If you want to do it a little bit more broken up, you can. This is just an easy, tried and true way that your teacher will definitely know it is indeed a thesis. And, you know, you won't run into the same issues as previous. At least that's the goal. Casey, question? Yes. Do we have to have our thesis during the introduction and the conclusion? Yes. We need it twice. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So the thesis is going to basically be either the second or third sentence in your introduction. And then you can pretty much just start with your thesis in the conclusion and then maybe add like one or two more sentences after that to kind of finalize everything. Okay, Does that make thank sense? You. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Yeah, so make sure that thesis is very clear. Um, you can start your paper, your introduction, and your conclusion both with the thesis. That's acceptable. That's fine. Okay, that way you know it's there, and then just add a sentence or two afterward explaining a little bit more. Um, does anybody want to share what their thesis is, or does anybody have any questions on creating an actual thesis? Jen, I think you have one more question. Okay. Uh, Kimberly, do you still have a question? Oh, okay. Your hand was still up. Uh, anybody else? No problem. I know Dee Dee had a question, and then I think we lost her. In... Oh, Azaria? Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Do you have a question? Yeah. 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 Give me one second. I'm responding to a customer. We'll click. Give me one second. Oh, sure. No problem. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, my question was for even though I'm already gonna have to take this class again because I felt horribly because I honestly do not understand anything that this man is asking for. But um, with this, with this, it, with this assignment, he has graded me so hard on this introduction paragraph or whatever it's called. Um, anything that I submitted to this man was not up to par. So I, I think like I don't, I don't know what to do with my I haven't even gotten to the body part because I'm still stuck on the introduction well I have done the body part but I haven't been able to revise that part at all because he's still harshly grading me on the thesis and I at this point I feel like I'm gonna have to retake it anyway so I don't even see the point in submitting it gotcha well, do you want to share with us what you have for your thesis so we can kind of workshop it together a little bit? Um, is there any way that I can email it to you? Yeah, that would be fine. If you guys wanted to um, send me your stuff to look over, that would be fine. Um, my email address is just jennifer.hellner, K-E-L-L-N-E-R. Here, I'll Hold stick on, it in the you... chat. Thank you, because I had to go to the second computer. Ugh. No problem. Melissa, did you have something too? Yeah, so I was just gonna um, say for everybody that's on here. So, hi, my name is Melissa. Um, I'm the student success manager. Um, just jumping on to to see our first um, tutorial here. But one thing that I want all of you guys to understand is. Um, that this essay is worth a lot of your points and so don't give up like so um azaria you know if you feel like he's been grading you really harsh like don't think that you're going to just fail the class automatically because this essay could be a really big turning point for you um yeah. especially yeah. if you put in the effort yeah. so you know we are doing this because we want to see all of you guys pass <laughs> and we want to you know make sure that you guys understand what is being asked of you in the rubric and everything so you know any way that we can assist and help that is what we're here for not just in this class but in all all of your courses you know if you need any assistance you can reach out to Kim who's your student success coordinator um, but don't give up that's why we're here um, and just a quick reminder that it's due at does anybody remember what time tomorrow morning <laughs> 11 it's due tomorrow. Is yeah, due tomorrow? so this, this is 11 o'clock in the morning due tomorrow which is this is why we are having this um, is just kind of a refresher. Make sure you have everything that's needed so that you can finish working on it tonight. Okay, so this um, is my problem. I, my teacher, I explained to him, I work two jobs, two, and one of them is overnight, which I explained to them and the people who signed me up for this class that I am very limited on time because because I don't have help right now paying for college. So this is one of the issues that I've been having as far as getting assignments done. Not saying that I don't want to, not saying that I want to drop the class, but I did explain to them like, what, I have to pay out of pocket for college. So this is like time right now is not something that I have especially with this teacher because of the multiple assignments that he throws on us on a daily basis. Yeah, totally understand. Um, one thing I would say, Azaria, is first of all, feel free to reach back out to your enrollment counselor or when you email me, I'd be happy to take a look at the FAFSA for you um, and see if that might be something that we can help you because you shouldn't have to be completely paying I've for been, college on your own. I've been dealing with this FAFSA ever since I started. Like, they've, it's been one thing after they need this, they need that. Oh, well, the government wanted you to submit for this. Like, I still have not gotten that settled. Okay. Well, when, as soon as we get off of this, feel free to shoot me a message and I would be happy to help you with that part as well. Because if we can help free up some more of your time and get you set up with a FAFSA, then that would definitely be very helpful as well. Um, and then overall, 
we know everybody's busy and working and crazy. And so, you know, we're here for you. Feel free to reach out to myself or Kim or whoever your specific enrollment counselors are at any point. And we're happy to help with even time management stuff or, you know, if there's something that you go over in class that you don't understand, you know, please reach out to us. We're here to help you through that stuff. And don't forget, you also have free tutors too. So there's a lot of support here and we can really help even with time management stuff to really, you know, kind of dig in Azaria to your particular situation and really help you kind of get that squared away. So we want you to be successful, not totally stressed out. Yeah. And I was going to add to that too, Jen, I think you summarized that beautifully. Like, sorry, I just started here. Um, but you know, I'm ready to jump right in and help out with any issues that you have. Time management is something that, you know, we use not only in school, but just in life in general, it's just a, something that we're always trying to improve on. So I can work with you, you know, even if we have to like create a schedule and see, okay, where does school fit in? Where can I budget even just an hour, you know, cause all that little increments of time, all of that's going to add up. And then eventually it'll be like no big deal and we'll have time for school and everything right. works itself out. So, yes, you know, we can promise, work on that. Yeah, I promise you can do it. I, I completely understand. I was um, teaching full time from 730 to 430, running my own tutoring company and going to school for my master's degree at the same time. So I completely understand you know, I was like a crazy person, but you know, I got it done. I set a lot of reminders on my phone. I did a lot of writing out of my schedule to really see specifically kind of like what Kim said, what holes I had. And then just make sure to reach out to your support people. You know, that's what we're here for. Don't feel like, you know, you can't, or even if you're pressed for time, shoot us a text. Hey, I got five minutes, but I need help figuring out X, Y, Z you know, and then we can even come up with resources or ways to help you or support while you're doing whatever at work and, you know, text or email or whatnot. And that goes for everybody, you know, please use us. That's, that's what we're here for. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. And um, it's probably going to be a, a stupid question, but no been, such thing. It's, it's been giving me problems. Okay. So when we're no problem. When we are um, getting ready to start typing our essay, and we have, and we have to put our last name with the page number, mm -hmm. I am having so much pro. I can I can get my last name up there, and I can get page one, but it's supposed to it's supposed to go page one, page two, so on. Mine does not do that. Mine goes uh, my last name, and then page one all the way down. Okay, so that is using headers and footers. Yes. Um, are you using Microsoft Word or Google Docs or which I'm program? I'm using Word. You're using Word? Okay. Um, let me see if I can. Is that going to be a big deal when they are grading it? If I'm uh, not able to get it fixed? That's what I'm worried about. I don't believe so. Um, Kim or Melissa, do you guys have any insight in that? Otherwise, I can send you a link on how to do that, or maybe offline I can show you how to do that. I don't think I can get my Microsoft Word to open at the moment. So, um, yeah, so, so a couple of things. Um, you know, we are not the ones grading these assignments. You know, we're looking at the rubric just like you are, and we are going based off of that, what we know they're going to be looking at and what we know has been a struggle for some of our students. So it's really hard for us to know how much they're going to dock, you know, how much points for certain things since we're not the ones actually um, on the committee grading these assignments. Um, if you want to, Kim, um, Kimberly, you could share your screen with us if you felt comfortable with that. And I'm sure we could walk you through how to um, do your Word document. Do you want to do that? Yes, give me one second. Sure, I'll give up control. And then I did put a little thing in the chat in case anyone else has a question that is a little Microsoft support thing that shows kind of how to do that as well. And also, also whenever I was looking to be able to submit the work, it doesn't, it doesn't give me a, a, a spot to even submit my paper. In the actual, like, portal, you mean? 
Yes. Like, you know how it, um, like it says we have the um, final essay and it, it doesn't even give me the option to even submit it. So, and I've tried emailing my teacher and I haven't heard back from him. Um, that I'm not sure about, to be honest. Um, I can, can help I... you with that. Yeah, okay. I can help you with that, Kimberly. So what time is it by you right now? Right now it's 622. Okay. So I am in tomorrow morning. I can help you pretty early, maybe at like 8.30. Is that too early for you? No, I got to be at work okay. at 9. Um, I'm usually up by 6, but yeah, that's fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'll send you uh, a link so that we can meet and you can share your screen with me and we can walk through that submission process together. Okay, I am just want to make sure that it gets submitted before it's due. Right, yeah, no, I totally get you. Okay, let's see if I can get my... So word, like I know how to do it. I just can't get, I just can't get um, the page numbers to line up like they're supposed to. No my, problem. We'll help you figure it out. My computer is slow. Don't worry. Okay. I'm almost there. Once you show me, then I can do it myself. Okay, I'm gonna turn my camera around. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Uh, new document. All right, I got so much stuff coming up. All right. So you can see. Try to make it where you can see it. It's kind of jumping. Yeah, so Kimberly, it's really small for us to see. Um. When you jump on the meeting with Kim tomorrow, do you think you okay. can join on your computer? Um, I'm sure I can. That would be the easiest so that you can share your screen on the computer and we can see your actual screen and be able to um, better direct you. Okay. But you can also take a look at the link that Jen sent in the chat and maybe you can, you know, find that. And if you can't figure it out, we can help you in the morning when you can log on on your computer. Okay. Does that make sound okay? Figure it out, though. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Does anybody else have any questions or anything they want to go through or review? Uh, Adrian, do you have a hand up? I sent my um my essay to you. Perfect. I will take a look. I will take a look. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? Comments? Concerns? Okay. Otherwise, if uh, you guys need anything else, feel free to reach out. Um, I can... Let me give you guys the number to reach me. If anybody needs anything in the morning, feel free to reach out to me. That's our number there. Um, and I can actually, I can give you guys, you got my email in there also if you want to email me. Um, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, feel free to give us a call in the morning um, if you have any other last-minute questions or you're trying to do something and you can't figure it out. And we can always jump on with you guys one-on-one -on -one here and make sure, um, like we're going to do with Kimberly tomorrow, that whatever you're having issues with gets resolved and uh, that you're all ready to go. Yeah, Kimberly, hang back for me once we wrap up here. Um, I just have to get that meeting on my calendar, okay?